have, we are going to video it, it and try and get it to channel uh, HPAT, uh, have the public access so they can show it perhaps. Um, if you have any questions throughout, feel free to ask us. Uh, we have our OPM here, uh, our architects, our site designer, and I'll let them make all their introductions. Um, but feel free to ask any questions along the way, and uh, we'll, we'll get into it right now. So I'll pass it off to Phil Palumbo or OPM. Thanks, Mike. Um, so I'm Phil Palumbo, project manager with Colliers. We are Hadley's OPM on the fire substation project. So I'll give an update on the project schedule project budget and the project site location, and then I'll hand it over to John McMillan and Carlos Patai to get into building and site design. So um, project schedule-wise, so we started design back in March of 2017. We got through the first phase of design, and during that estimate process, we found out we were over budget. So when we went through um, the estimates and tried to figure out how we could build something to our budget, ultimately the building committee chose to um, put the project on hold because there wasn't anything within our budget that was going to be something that we would be able to live with or the, the fire department would be able to live with. So um, we started the additional funding process. So successfully got through that this past June. Um, so we picked back up into the second phase of design, which we're currently in. We're anticipating being done with that phase mid-March, so in a couple weeks. And then once we're through that, we'll get into the final phase of design, which we anticipate going into like mid-March of next year and then rolling into bidding um, late March through April and early May of next year, hoping to break ground in, in June of uh, next year and hoping to occupy by 2020, July, August of 2020. Um, so for budget update, so with that town vote, the project budget got an additional $855,400. So the total project budget went from $2.98 million to approximately 3.83 million. We have a construction budget within that total project budget that's 2.8 million dollars. Um, we're currently in this phase of design. We, we're currently in the estimate process. We actually just got estimates back today. We still have to dig into them and confirm scopes and quantity, but we're tracking on budget on that 2.8 million dollar construction budget, so it's great news. Um, so for a project site location update, when we started this project, the project site was going to be 239 River Drive, so the property of um, the North Hadley Village Hall. Uh, the plan was the building was going to be built on the ball field you know, to the left of the, of the building or to the north of it. Um, that site has a lot of clay, so because of that, if we were to stay on that site, We'd have to do a preload scope where essentially you excavate all the unsuitables within the building footprint and you come in with new soil uh, to a height of approximately five feet above grade so you're essentially building this mound to help create settlement and then start construction so that's an additional anywhere from 200 to 300k so um, luckily enough while the project was on hold the town found another lot in town uh, west side of river drive at the intersection of river drive and stockbridge road town purchased that in December of last year and um, so technically it's lot 19 River Drive so intersection of Stockbridge Road and River Drive um, and that's where the project is and um, no concerning soil issues on it so um, all is good in that and uh, the property is approximately a little over nine acres uh, in size so if there aren't any questions I'll hand it over to John and Carlos and they can get into building and site design Hey, you. My name is John McMillan. I'm an architect with Brian Hart Associates. With us tonight, uh, we have Carlos from Furniture Design Group. Uh, we're going to start the evening with a uh, presentation of the site and then I'll discuss the building. Yeah, Carlos? Yeah. Good evening. My name is Carlos Santa from the Berkshire Design Group, and I'm a landscape architect. Then I've been working on the site part of the planning for the uh, fire station. And the first thing I wanted to show you was kind of an overall, just to get you placed, as, as Phil just mentioned, uh, intersection on Stockbridge and River Drive or Route 47. Um, this is the total size of parcel, about 9.1 acre or 9.2 acres. Um, the area that we're looking at for development is about two acres of that full site. Um, and, and we have, just to go very quickly over some of the site constraints that we have, you know, to the uh, west we, we have a river that goes by, in, and then beyond that there is the Connecticut River. Um, 
So we, we do have some resource areas outside of our parcel but that do affect our parcel because of uh, buffers and riverfront areas. So we're showing those. Um, those are way back on the property and affect the area that's steepest on the property itself. Um, so the placement of the building where we're proposing is really not going to be affected by any of these resource areas that we have here. Um, and also like Phil uh, pointed out, we uh, geotechnical reports looked at the soils and the soils are good for building a building and then on our side we looked at uh, drainage on the site for uh, strong water drainage and also the um, preliminary, at least uh, as of right now, the, uh, the soils are really good conducive to infiltration so we can have a, um, our drainage system work uh, fairly easily and also uh, probably more economically than if the soils were, were a little harder. Um, so um, there's a lot of positive to this site. Um, and what we're showing now, um, again, just to look at the big picture, um, there was uh, it was required or asked that, that we had a driveway that went just um, against Stockbridge Road itself. Um, it creates a, a better intersection than if it's before or after, um, so that there is a point where people are actually saw everybody is stopping on either side, and, and people are aware that there is an entrance there. Um, the other uh, request was to move or to have the entrance to actual base to be farther away from that intersection as to provide enough uh, sight lines for people who are coming out and anybody who's driving in so they can actually see <coughs> the fire station itself. Uh, different than the original design that we had, the setbacks here are a little bit farther back than we had before, so, um, so the building itself is a little bit farther set back and I think that also gives uh, more space and that drive for the base and, gives more opportunity for sight lines and for people to be aware of the fire station right there. Uh, so that's, um, and in, within the site, the reason why we have the fire station where we have it in addition to the driveways, um, this area is slightly higher than the rest of the parcel. There is a little knoll here, so we tried to kind of put it in between the flat, flatter area, or lower area of the site, and this knoll, so it creates a little buffer to the uh, potters to the, to the side here. Um, and also, but we don't, we really don't want to put the building in the lower point in, in the site. And that also gives us opportunity to have drainage going somewhere else uh, where, it's, where it's lower. So that's the uh, majority why the location of the building um, is where it is. And, and we brought it forward as, as much as we could to River Drive. So we are leaving a large part of this parcel on use. So if, um, there could be some future use for it. Um, I'm going to just jump then to kind of more of the details of what you're looking at here. Um, the driveway and these kind of uh, big uh, arcs for uh, the driveway are, are, are meant for that a um, the fire trucks can actually come all the way through. So there's a little bit more room that you would no normally need in that area. But the idea was to provide enough room for the fire uh, fire trucks to actually go all the way in. Um, there is we've left space for a future expansion for an extra bay uh, that would also provide then total movement through the site. Um, what we're showing is uh, a 35 foot wide curb cut for the actual uh, Paratus base. Um, it'll have a concrete reinforcement and it'll be a pretty thick uh, uh, asphalt uh, paving in that area just to protect the asphalt from the heavy machines. Um, the same with our driveway. We're, we're looking at four inches of bituminous concrete or of asphalt. Um, yeah, to prevent any damage on the on the asphalt itself from the from the uh, apparatus that are going to be driving in and out. As somebody had asked me before, we have 19 uh, total parking spaces, two handicap spaces, and um, what, uh, main entrance of the uh, of building um, is at grade so that there is uh, accessibility through that. Um, and then on the back, um, we do have a back door that has a ramp so that there's access also on the back. So for that's the majority of the circulation, as we would call it, for the for the site. Um, we I wanted to just run through quickly what the utilities for the project look like. Um, another reason that this site is there's a good thing about the site is that uh, all our drainage and sewer lines actually on River Roads uh, on River Drive stop right here, but it's close enough that we can actually connect to them, so we don't have to provide any on-site sewer or anything like that. So we, um, at, at least as of right now, with the information we have from the survey, um, uh, more than likely we'll have connections for sewer 
and drainage overflows into um, the municipal system. Uh, uh, we're looking at uh, bringing in a, a eight inch uh, water service that's gonna go all the way through, all the way to the back and ending in a fire hydrant. Uh, the idea is that um, we will then tap to that eight inch water main for our uh, fire and domestic services for the uh, fire station but that provides a, a, a new line so if in the future the town wanted to expand or do any other uh, project out back here they, they already have water uh, pulled through. Um, the same thing we were thinking of electric where we will uh, more than likely have the electric service for us for our building going to a transformer but also laying out uh, at least empty conduits that could be used in the future so that they can pull more electric all the way to the back here. Um, and then drainage, um, like I said, the soils are very conducive to infiltration, which is what we really want to do in any site. We really don't want to concentrate storm water and send it to a tube and um, an and outfall to a river or a stream or a wetland. Uh, so in this case, what, uh, because of the good nature of the, of the soils here, what we're proposing is not having actual catch basins, but actually having overflow. So all our drainage is going to go over, um, uh, there's an area where we're going to be cutting off the, the curb. Um, it's going to be reinforced with stone and then the water will just migrate into two uh, depressions. Uh, and at this point we haven't finalized the sizing of these, but they're, they're going to be pretty shallow depressions, grassed that can be easily maintained by just mowing um, or mowing once a year even for those areas. And then water would go to those low spots um, and then uh, uh, gradually infiltrate and, infiltrate and what we found was with, with the soils we have that shouldn't take more than 24 hours, it should be a very quick infiltration in there. Um, we've provided in those cases where you have large storms or moments where you're going over the uh, capacity, uh, there is an overflow and that would then uh, overflow to the uh, municipal system. Um, sewer, sewer wise, um, because we have a, a, a drain in the middle of the uh, apparatus bay um, and there could be the possibility of oil or grease coming off of the uh, trucks. Um, sewer wise we would have a drain that then goes to what we call uh, it's a grease and water separator um, similar to what you would have in a restaurant for the grease trap but in this case it's, it's really not for uh, that amount of grease it's really for any oils or anything that uh, comes off of the uh, of the engines from any of the vehicles or, or from the work there. And what we, we're showing that it's a small tank that goes, uh, we're showing it right now here, preliminary, so that it has CC access. That tank has to be drained uh, a certain amount of times. Uh, actually, when the levels of the oils get to a certain height, uh, a service comes in and, and pulls the oils out. And then from there, uh, we also are showing then a six inch um, sewer line uh, that would then uh, hit a, a manhole. And it's the last manhole that works with gravity, so again, a good thing because we don't have to pump or anything like that and have issues with failure pumps or anything like that. Uh, from this point down, there is um, it would have been had, had to be pressured. Um, so we, we are we can actually gravity all our our, our uh, sewer. Um, on the back of uh, in addition to I mean the, we have electric and I talked about a transformer. So there's a transformer pad. There will be also a uh, power generator that's going to go back in the back of the building and also a HVAC uh, system for the, um, for the building. Um, to power that uh, power generator we're proposing, I'm showing here three, uh, four uh, propane tanks that are buried. Um, it might be that it's three, but for now we wanted to keep uh, at least, uh, make sure that we had the amount of space to have even uh, four uh, propane tanks. And I think John might talk a little bit more about why, why we need that um, power generator um, on the back of the, of the power station. Um, and last but not least, we, we, uh, we're proposing a number of trees. We've set them back so that once uh, a car is driving through here, the idea is that there is enough you know, sight lines again, like I said before, so that they are aware of the uh, trucks or anything that's emergency that's coming out of the uh, fire station itself. Um, and then we provided, uh, there is an existing actual, um, street light right on the entrance, so we're going to be reu basically reusing that. In, and also there's another uh, street light right on the uh, Apparatus Bay uh, curb cut there. But we've also added about seven uh, sight lights um, for
for safety in the parking lot and also on the back, uh, so if, in case of emergencies. Um, and we are envisioning that those will be, some of these will be in, in photovoltaic, so they will turn on at, at night, but some of these might just be, uh, uh, have some uh, <coughs> uh, motion detection so that they're not turn on all the time. So maybe you have the front ones turn on all the time at night, and then the back ones turn on as a vehicle moves in there or somebody moves around. Um, again, just to save light and uh, to save electricity and also to, to not create a, a big uh, late, uh, back area here. I think, I think that's the, the details on the site and I will, unless somebody has a question right now, I'll leave it to John. Thank you, Carlos. Any questions on the site? Right. Um, can you see these over here or should I move them over there? It's up to you. Here. So the, the building itself, the building construction, is uh, about 53, 5400 square feet. There's a, uh, a small mezzanine, about 900 square feet, that's, in, that's included in the building. The building is a wood frame building with uh, uh, cement board siding right now and, and a metal roof. As, as far as the plan is concerned, um, on that plan, uh, to orientate you, this would be uh, River Drive. As Carlo mentioned, there's a main public entrance right here, uh, coming in the public entrance, which is covered. So if you're coming in and it's raining, you got some cover before you get to the door. Uh, there's a small vestibule. The vestibule fronts on a dispatch office area. So if you're coming in and the door is open, it's because someone's in there. And if you have business with them, uh, there is a transaction window uh, and counter in the vestibule. So you really don't have to go much farther than that through the uh, through the uh, other parts of the of the building. Um, off of the vestibule, there's also a meeting space. So if you're coming in for a meeting, if there's a, an event there uh, coming in off the vestibule, you can come into the meeting space, which is uh, probably would be your destination. Uh, the other parts of the building, uh, as I said, there's a dispatch area here. Uh, there'd be dispatch equipment in here, which would be the backup to the main station. Uh, there is a uh, what we call a uh, day room. Uh, basically, it's, it's a uh, kitchenette with a uh, dining space and the ability for officers uh, to gather. Uh, there are, there's one office space, and then there's two spaces all against the outside wall with windows. These are designed as sort of a multi-purpose space, office, storage, or emergency bunk space. So uh, there's an ability here to, to stage uh, and put uh, officers here in the event of inclement weather or other activities. Um, the rest of the space is uh, sort of utilitarian. It's, uh, as I mentioned, 5,300 square feet is not very large. We consider two thirds of it as apparatus. Uh, there's mechanical electrical space for uh, domestic hot water, electrical service, phone service, um, and uh, heating. There is uh, a storage space. There's two storage spaces off of the apparatus. One is going to have a washer extractor, so uh, the officers with their turnout gear have an ability to have that washed in the station, they don't have to worry about uh, carrying contagions home with them. Uh, there's two restrooms, uh, one with access off the apparatus and one with access off the, uh, the office area. This is to keep people from who might be uh, more dirty or contaminated from here walking through the office space. A uh, small closet, each bathroom has a, uh, has a shower facility. Uh, and there's a couple of the minor closets in, in the building. Uh, the main space, the apparatus space, is basically uh, Two double bays um, designed with um, two frontline vehicles here that can roll out to River Drive. There's a rear door that you can either drive through or you can come out and have three frontline vehicles, three frontline apparatus. Uh, in this space, there's a turnout gear, so officers coming in have the ability to come through the door, down their turnout gear, and, and quickly get into the engine uh, and roll out. The, uh, as Carlo mentioned, we do have some mechanical uh, utilities around uh, up in the mezzanine, which is accessed off the stair off the uh, apparatus space. Uh, there is the uh, communications 911 uh, data room where you might have your servers and your communication gear. Uh, there's also some uh, uh, air handling equipment, the HVAC air handling equipment. Uh, we didn't want to put it on the first floor. It's much more valuable square footage down here, much more functional. So up in the mezzanine, we have a have an air handler, which is going to distribute the uh, uh, heating and cooled air. Um, 
As far as the heating system for the apparatus, we are using a hydronic system. Uh, so basically the slab is uh, warmed with uh, water piping within it. Uh, it's actually a, a very comfortable arrangement since this is a very high uh, space. Basically the uh, doors themselves are 14 feet high and this is a, uh, has a slight pitched cathedral ceiling in it. So we have uh, hydronic heating that keeps the heating down low. Certainly underneath the trucks melts ice and snow off the trucks more comfortable. If the, if the air gets cooler up above, not really concerned because nobody's really experiencing, experiencing it way up there. Um, as I mentioned, we have, and Carl mentioned, there is a standby generator for the facility. Um, this facility is a, considered, as far as the building code is concerned, it's considered an essential facility. Police station, fire station, even DPW facilities. In the event of emergency, weather emergency, catastrophe, whatever, there's certain types of buildings the code recognizes that needs to be up and running in practically any emergency. So the, the structural requirements, the seismic requirements are uh, much higher with this type of building. Power emergency power requirements are also there. So uh, we do have a stand, um, what's called a legally required standby generator uh, that will uh, take care of 100% of this building and its fuel source is uh, buried propane tanks. Again, the propane tanks are required on site so that you can run this building for 72 hours in an emergency before you need to refill. It's likely to get more than 72 hours. As I said, it's not a big building. Uh, as far as the outside design goes, um, we're trying to keep this in a uh, sort of a, a little contemporized historical, uh, contemporized colonial uh, design. Uh, on the main entrance here, you can see there's a there's a slight uh, arc and uh, eyebrow to the porch and the uh, overhead doors. The siding type is uh, a couple of different styles of uh, cement board, uh, some shakes, some clapboard, uh, and some vertical siding up here. We're trying to, again, create a little bit of scale with this. And again, the historical uh, approach here is to uh, make smaller elements, include much much more, much more elements, uh, much smaller scale elements. Uh, there will be some lighting on the outside of the building. The roofing type would be a, uh, a sanding seam metal roof. There will be a cupola up here, lit or not lit to be determined. Um, and the side approach from where the parking is, the parking would be here, there's also a door here. So it is possible people may choose to approach and use this door, which would get them right into the, uh, the day room. Uh, again, basically we're looking at uh, vinyl clad or aluminum clad wood windows. Again, keeping that arch and a much larger uh, signature uh, on this side of the building. Um, and then vertical siding above. Again, you get to see a little bit of the standing seam on, on the front porch. On the opposite side, uh, on this particular side, as Carlos mentioned, we have left room on the site for a future bay. So if there's ever a need to expand on this facility, you can add that bay. You're not pinned up against a property line or a setback or anything like that. So if you're really, if you wish to expand, you can expand out that way. Um, similar, similar siding and again that signature arch. In the very back of the building we have the one apparatus door. Uh, we didn't include it's a, a fourth apparatus door because this allows more storage space. We imagine this is going to be a lay down area in the apparatus room. If this were a door and you're trying to get another vehicle in there, you'd really be short on storage. In the back of the building, again, the, the two or three different types of siding, the metal roof, uh, again, you can see utilities, electrical disconnects, meters, uh, flues uh, coming out the back. So again, we're trying to keep, a, keep the uh, utility side of the building away from the public. So, I don't know if I missed anything, but if you have any questions. You said clapboard siding? Yeah. So is it going to be painted, or is that yes. something? Yeah, the cement board siding, or what's called a, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, poly ash. Well, there's two different types, but they're basically the same thing, but it's a type of siding that uh, doesn't decompose like wood does, and it holds on to paint three times longer. So you do have a, this is a painted building, uh, but the paint lasts three, three times longer, maybe more uh, than a regular building, because you don't have uh, 
the organ as much as the organics on the inside. Krishna, it's the same kind of thing. That is the same. Okay. Yeah. Same yeah. Side. yeah. Uh, hardy plank, hardy siding is one. Uh, Burrell is a Burrell. different type. You've had good success with that in projects. How many fire trucks are going to be kept up here? There's three. Well, Chief. There's actually there'll be two and then a smaller piece. So right now we have uh, our mini pumper. It's our M5, and then engine three, which is downstairs right now, because it doesn't fit in the North Station. Uh, that will be moving up there, and then there'll be a small rescue squad that's up there right now. So there'll be three, three apparatus. So the trucks have to back in. The, uh, the, yes, so we back in we back in here as well, so there's plenty of room here for them to, <coughs> because they have such good line of sight here, unlike the North Station where it is now, they'll be able to take a look up. We've even discussed doing some uh, stoplights, solar stoplights, which won't, which won't impact any electrical bills or anything like that, if need be, uh, so that they'll be able to back right into the site. There is another option where they can go around and pull right in, if need be, yes. So we left that option as well. We need a light or something at, at the intersection. Yeah, there would be there would be some there would be lights. There would probably be three three lights probably one here, one here, and one there. You think on the summer side? Something. Not traffic lights, but yeah, traffic, traffic actual lights? stop lights. Yeah. So if if we need it, we're that's that's part of the that's we're plan, we're trying to figure out if we actually need, need those because the line of sights that we have here. I think we have enough line of sight where they can put their lights on and back in. Yeah, like you do so, now. Yes. Here. Correct. Yep. The other thing is this this building is a replica of the one that we had proposed for the basically for the lot up at the North Hadley Hall. The only difference is is we changed the location of the um, the radio room that was downstairs. We moved it up into the mezzanine to try and allow for storage is always at a premium, especially in this building. So we we've, we've they've created a little bit more storage for us. Um, the big things that we're facing now is you know cancer in fire service is horrendous. So we're trying to keep a dirty area and then a clean area. So folks coming back from a structure fire will have the ability to take their gear off, throw it into a washer dryer, and then shower on the dirty side so that they're not taking us home to their families. That's that's the biggest thing. That's so that's what we're really um, we're dealing with a lot of a lot of firefighters that are coming down with cancer in my age group. So they're really pushing to not have that happen in you know the new the new folks we have coming on board. And then we were asked, we were tasked with, and it's all actually, like I said, this is exactly a replica. We were asked to make sure, I don't know what this town's going to look like in 50 years from now, but we wanted to make sure that we had scalability. So if, you know, if, if it stays this way, it stays this way. If we become full-time where we're moving everything here, there's the ability to have a building that could be reused for another purpose if needed. If not, um, you know, there's a lot of very big, big houses up north, and our last structure fire was right here. Um, so <laughs> the, the homeowner was like, boy, I wish that station was there right now. But um, anyways, it was the Nabala, Nabala home. Um, oh, the Lightning Strike. Yes, yep. Well, you also had that big barn fire a couple of years ago. Yes, right across. We had uh, we one, had one at Wally Hibbert as well that was really big. So we got some really large fires up there. So I, you know, you have some of our north firefighters here that really appreciate the fact that, you know, they're working in that area. You know, Joe Boysberg, um, he's always seems to be around when we have something major coming up and can get a truck there. So it's, I think it's really important that we have that ability for these call force folks to do that. Just another question with regards to uh, the energy usage of the building. Are we doing anything to super insulated or anything along those lines. And I'm kind of asking because just doesn't seem like we're going to get natural gas anytime soon in this area, kind of relying on propane as a solution for heating and um, generator. generator power. It looks like a really big roof. I mean, there's a potential for solar there. It's, it's, you know, it's the wrong way. Yeah, yeah is place. there anything there for trying to make it, you know, I personally don't like the solution of electric heat, but you know, electric heat possibly, and you know, I don't know, something that might be a little bit more toward sure. where we're possibly going with our energy needs in the future. So as, sources. as far as energy goes, and, and think about mechanical, HVAC, uh, plumbing, domestic hot water, um, we're lucky. 
Massachusetts has got like the second most conservative uh, energy code in the country. Um, so just meaning that energy code is something. I mean, when you talk about super insulation, the payback on insulation above that number is poor. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do, of course, meet code. We look at trying to find places where we can do better and get payback. Obviously, it's much better to be able to put something in there and uh, <coughs> get that energy payback feature. So uh, we do have high EER uh, efficient equipment. We are designing a, for instance, the, this um, hydronic heating system is designed so that you can maintain lower temperatures overall. Because the temperature you want is down here at, at your feet, and you're not necessarily concerned what's, up, what's above. We do have these stratification fans above, so in the summertime you sort of get that reverse effect. Um, we didn't look at solar basically because we have a reasonably tight budget. We're not trying to over design and over build this facility. So uh, we don't have that. We, we do have a roof right now that runs uh, basically north and south. So we don't have necessarily the orientation. And you can see if we tried to do that, it would really kind of create more you, site you, development costs. You could put a room on there. You could put a, a ground mounted thing oh, down, down, down the road. Town could do all, yes, in the future. Of course, of course. Well, with this particular project, we're looking to try to uh, capture a certain amount of space for a certain dollar, for a certain dollar amount, and uh, and obviously, you know, have a appreciable building. So uh, that was our mainstay. Uh, we're, we're, we we try to where we can uh, comply with some of the uh, lead, lead, uh, leadership and energy design uh, criteria, but uh, we're not we're not trying to. Uh, spend more money than we have to achieve that. What is the pitch on that roof in front of the apparatus bay, the very front? I'm going to say probably 6 or 7 and 12. Are there gutters on that? Yes, there will be gutters on that. There will be gutters. Yeah, and, and snow guards are holding up the snow, yes. All right, guys. That's all we got. Does anybody have any additional questions? You said you're going to be able to break that ground if all goes well in <coughs> mid summer next late, year. Yeah, late spring next year. You're looking about one year to get it right. built. Yeah, 13 to 14 month duration with closing and a bunch of stuff. So we'll be opening three buildings the same year. Yeah, they're all kind of falling in the same time. <laughs> So it's exciting. It's exciting. How it is. I mean, we'll 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 have to determine um, in terms of bidding timeline, making sure they don't overlap, because then that could um, that could conflict and create um, you know issues with you know contractors that would hopefully bid try to go after all three. Maybe they're choosing just one because of overlap. So we're gonna we'll have to stage the bid the bidding so they don't overlap. But that won't be hard to do. Any slack from any of the neighbors? Uh, no, I mean at this point, in terms of what we've done on the site, we've done the survey, and we've done um, we actually did the borings for foundation design. We did that um, last year, and then we've done some test pits for storm water design to understand the the perk rate for the soil. Um, and no, it's it's been fine. So because of the Connecticut River and, and the wetlands, we we had to or Carlos had to um, flag, essentially flag that that wetland arc radius you see on our site to, to understand that, that layout, the idea is you gotta, you know, track the wetland uh, outline along that adjacent abutter. Um, That's not actually the Connecticut River? No, 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 no. no. so there's, another, there's yeah. another lot uh, to the, um, that so that would be the west of this lot. I think that's what they call Russell Brook. Brook. Yeah. Oh, exactly. yeah. It's a perennial stream. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It does get enough water. So for, for Carlos to get that, he had to work with the Conservation Commission to um, be allowed to just eye it. Um, that and Butter really didn't want us stepping on uh, their property. Uh, but they got through it. Yeah, it was. But as far as the neighbors, I think Carlo, Carlos can explain. We went, we have like twice the setback we need here. They were just concerned we would really bring on top of yep. them. So we have twice the setback we maintained the burn in between the building so that resolve that one issue. They were not building directly across the street from that house, so they're not seeing <coughs> you know, the fire station yeah, yeah. in front of them. So we did everything we could to kind of accommodate 
you know, the neighbors say do have. Before we before we uh, put the project on hold, we actually had um, some of the owners of the, the houses come in and actually were able to review what it was going to look like, and we actually had done an initial potential location because they were trying to figure out where we would be drilling to see if the site was suitable. So that was part of uh, before everything went on hold. So they did have an opportunity to comment, and they their initial things were, you know, if that's what it's truly going to look like, then they would be happy. What's going to happen to the barn? Oh, so, isn't that a barn? Oh. Yeah, so that's not part of this project scope, uh, but per the survey, it is technically on this lot. We own it though, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's on the lot, yeah. And, um, and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it, it is a historical building. Um, so, so it might, I, I don't know what the repercussions of that is, but I know that it is uh, in the registry, I think, of historical buildings. Oh, do we rent it out to somebody? Or? Uh, right now I it is. I don't know. That's <laughs> we're going to put more junk in. DPW. <laughs> 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 historical junk? <laughs> yeah, we have some historical junk. Hey, why can't we go to the <laughs> But, you know, to that question, though, so the rendered site plan on the left, essentially our construction site is going to be what is kind of rendered in light green. That's more or less going to be um, what this project scope of work is. We're estimating, and it's about, for all the nine acres, is about two, two, two and a half acres of work. So we, we don't foresee going way beyond that area. So, so if something else was built, where would that go? It depends on what, I mean, I've, I've done some just for my own sake of looking at the space. I mean, there's enough space to have, for instance, some ball fields if you needed them, if you if the town, that's something that they wanted. I just wanted to get a scale of the size, but um, yeah, you could literally put one single 90 foot ball field here. Um, and then any type of construction can happen but just behind the parking lot if it needed. Um, and that's why we're providing all these runs of, of uh, utilities that, that are in standby, so when the town wants to build something back there, they can. Put that area up in the corner that you wouldn't build in that corner on the right hand. Oh, not at all. And, and no. it, to the same, so the easiest uh, way to think of the area that will be the easiest to develop in here on the back is anything outside of these blue lines. Because we, it, it would require a lot more, more permitting to be inside of any of these two areas. So what, what I'm foreseeing is that this is the best area left over of the site. Mike, is this going to be on-call only, or are you guys going to stay there? No, this, as of right now, this is for, it's on-call. It's a uh, redundancy, so if something happens to this building, we would be able to operate out of that structure. Uh, but as of right now, there's no plan in If there is a plan, is there a place for the guys and girls to sleep? Yes, that was actually designed in the first budget for the location up at the North Hadley Hall. So the spaces he was telling you over here, there's two basically storage office potential bunk spaces. And then we also designed this so that if we had to move people in, if we had some type of a natural disaster, that was the other reason why we needed, did the heated floor as well. We can move our apparatus out and use this to house people short term if we need to. So it could be used as an emergency shelter? Yeah, shelter or a warming cooling station. Okay. Because we would be operating, if there's an emergency, we're going to be probably operating pretty heavily. Right. So the plan was is if we had a snow tober again or something, if we needed space to bring people to warm up, you know, we have this whole area here, and we could potentially, if we had to, we could move our trucks outside and have people short term there to, you know, to feed to to in the summer. Sometimes you know we have these blackouts for power. If we had to cool people down, we'd have the ability to get them in there. With with fans. We decided not to air condition the whole space because of the load, so they put that nice big fan in the middle, and then we can bring in fans. This area is air conditioned, so if we have folks that are really, really hurt, we can get them in there cooling those. Right. So you have the, the um, server and the 911 equipment that is necessary up on the mezzanine area. Mm -hmm. Does that area have its own? Yes. HP a little is split system, system out there. system for itself. Yeah, 24-7. Yeah. The other thing is this is not being built out with all that equipment in it right now. This is um, 
this is it's for future. It's for if we, if we're, you know, we're looking into uh, getting it ready to go. Uh, so that would be something we'd probably be looking for from grant funding or something along those lines. But we have a redundant plan here. So the black trailer that you see parked out there outside on our fire department side, that's actually set up as a short-term dispatch center. So we have the ability, if our station goes down here, which has happened, uh, it happened once to us where we had both a power outage and the generator failed. We have, uh, we have a very old generator out back in the motherboard on it failed. So we had two power outages. So we were basically back onto the triple, the last thing that we have to power our dispatch center, and that's battery backup, those big battery units. Uh, we had about five minutes left of life, and luckily the main power line came back on. So we put together this trailer so we have the ability to get our dispatchers in there if the station you know, goes down. So that's why we feel it's really important that we have the ability to get them someplace where they can operate. I can't tell you if there'll be an additional 911 equipment. The radio company is saying we most likely will not need any additional 911 equipment. Uh, they should be able to do that out of here. Um, so I think. Do you need a tower? No, no. The, we actually talked about that as well. We actually have a tower. Um, it's on where Montgomery Rose used to be. Oh yeah. There's a there's a that smokestack. We actually have a receiver on that tower. It was part of their build out there. And we are looking at some upgrades because our radios have been pretty rough. We're looking at a microwave system and trying to get something up on, on Skinner Mountain. Our lines of sight, Mount Warner is a tough one for us. It really really makes it difficult for line of sight with radio. So that's, that's coming in the future. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, guys. Appreciate your time. Thanks for coming thank out. Thank you. Thank you.